Hello everybody, welcome back to Train Sim World 2 where we are going to be playing the Fully Fueled Mission. This mission is the most ridiculous one because a lot of people get stuck on this mission and our goal to hopefully with through this video, even if it takes two hours to do this video, is to show you how to make this episode easier to get through. Um, first, like, we're going to let the guy talk, he's going to say what he's going to say and we're going to come right back after he is done. Before boarding Q015, these GP38-2s must be attached to the rear. Climb aboard and move them to the classification yard where Q015 is waiting. All right, so here's a couple problems with this mission. So the first problem is I am going to be a lead engine, as you can see by the star. The one behind me is going to be a trailing engine. We're going to be connecting up to this long rail car that goes all the way to the front here. This is a, going to be our lead engine, the guy right, right in here, that front engine. And then this is going to be a trailing engine. And what's going to happen is we're going to have two more trailing engines in the back. And so the initial setup for this train to go all the way to the top of the mountain, we over here somewhere it's really critical to determine if your train runs or not or if your train gets stuck the other problem we've got is there is a train slowly moving right now as you can see the cars are still slowly rolling in and this train is going to go ridiculously slow it's going to take forever get to get to the top of the mountain and so i can guarantee you one thing the longer you take on this mission, the better it is for this train to get out of the way, the less likely you actually have to stop, and the less likely you have to go into a yellow light or a red light. Unfortunately, this train's going to take probably my entire setup time to finally get to where I am here. So hopefully in the time that I set up the front engine, it will be hopefully maybe like here or so, maybe even over on the curb. I do not know, but that's going to be the engine that's going to give us the most trouble. The problem with this engine, you can kind of see how long it is it is also almost about a mile long as well and so that's going to contribute to some problems so let's talk first about setting up this as a lead trailing engine here set up first for two engine and then we'll come back and talk about a lead trail 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 engine and that's our goal with this so first step let's climb up onto the trailing engine first i always like to set this one up first we always like to make sure our release handle is indeed released and not locked in i would hate to see this here get locked in accidentally and find out your train can't move um next let's hop inside this engine i've got to undo my zoom there and first thing i'm going to do is of course check the fuse box make sure this engine is turned on it is check the fuse why not and what i do need to make sure for later is i need to make sure to come back and shut the radio off and i will do that when i get there um once i get to that point but for now i'm going to leave it alone and i'm going to come back to the setup for this i'm going to set this part here controlling with unit coupled at long controlled from another unit coupled at either end turn on my lights for the number light hop out the opposite door we're going to leave that door open temporarily here we're going to open up our engine and you can see right there i've actually got power to the loop of the oil pressure there so it is working i finally cranked my governor in this mission so you can hear the engine cranking maybe because i've got my sound turned down but i know that's cranking the engine so the good news is this engine is actually turned on excellent all we got to do here is set up the rest of our pumps and whatnot and what we do want to make sure we have the generator field turned off we want to turn off the engine run and we want to turn off the control and fuel pump this will allow the previous lead engine that i'm going to walk in to turn this engine on and off at will we need to make sure our cutout is set to cutout. We need to make sure our MU2A valve is set to trail 626. And at this point, we don't need to touch anything else in this engine. This engine is permanently set up. We're gonna leave this alone. We're gonna come back to it once we hook up to the other engine before we continue on. Next up, we're gonna hop over to the front, now temporarily lead engine of our train. We're gonna hop in here and we're actually going to check the engine first. Let's go ahead and check this. We have uh, power on the engine. We need to just crank the governor and make sure we got power here. We do. The engine is cranking and is running. Why I say this? Because you can easily accidentally hear the train that it's a little so far away. It's right about here right now. But eventually you can hear that train coming up here and you might actually hear some other trains along the way. It looks like these rail cars have already been set up for another train at some point. But we're going to connect to the one that we spent all that time working on from earlier. So let's get inside this engine. Go ahead and pop the door open. Shut the door behind us. And 
let's go ahead and set our number lights first. We're going to turn on these number lights. Next, we're going to turn on the headlights to control the controlled controlling front with the unit coupled at long hood and I feel like I set that up wrong on the other engine. This train's rocking. Why is it rocking? I do not know. Well, anyways, let's check our fuses. The fuses is on. We're good there. We don't have to worry about anything else for now. Pop out here, make sure that this thing is set to release, which I already know it is, so I'm not too worried there. Let's go ahead and sit in the engineer's seat. We'll turn on some lights in the cabin. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and set the reverser because it won't let me do anything else. Set the independent brake to full application. MU two-way valve to lead or dead. This cutout valve for some reason got set to freight, so we're not going to worry about that. We're going to release our automatic brakes, and that automatic brake, as you can see there, is filling up our equalizer and brake pipe to 89. The master reserve, or the main reserve, it's already set, or the main reservoir, it's already set, and the brake cylinder, of course, is for my engine, so we're not going to worry about that temporarily. Um, we will want to set our gauge lights, and we will eventually need to use our um, dynamic brakes. Turning on our headlights for now, we're going to turn it on to dim for the time being. And all we need to do is just turn on the gen field here. And before we get this train going forward, we are going to set this to the throttle to forward. And then we're going to blow the horn a couple times. We're going to release our independent brake. And we're going to set our throttle up one, at least, to get this train moving. And I am going to check one little thing, because I'm wondering, control from another unit couple to either end. Okay, I did set that that way. I was kind of wondering about that. And you can already see it says I need to switch to the correct track up ahead. We're going to do that as the train rolls forward to set the switch to the correct track here. And everything else is linked up already. So all we got to do is just roll over about 500 yards forward. And while this train does this, our competitor is on a green light and he is ready to go. So we won't be able to go anyways until that train rolls on by. So we might as well just open the windows and kind of wait up on, on this guy here. So let's go ahead and just kind of coast along here. And I want to make sure I get at least the 30 AP going for this area here if I can kind of get this. And maybe a little bit more. I'll get to 14 and that should be enough. There it goes. We're going to kind of coast along here and at some point we'll slow our train down or it will naturally start to slow itself down, one of the two. And it looks like hopefully we get the 30 AP for the beginning and, and we should be good after that. We're going to get a whole bunch of AP points going forward after that. Uh, surprisingly, I learned wheel slip does not drastically affect this train. You'd be surprised, honestly, how much wheel slip can play a role just trying to get up this mountain. But I, I would just got stuck for a little bit i was filling with things i thought i screwed the mission up and somehow i got a gold i'm just shocked that even happened so i want to make sure i at least get the 30 to start this thing off even if i have to there it goes that's the 30 i'm looking for right there and we are currently about 180 yards out so we're going to slow this train down a little bit more there's our engine let's just go say hi real quick this is the long train that we've got to wait on they're going to take forever to get to the top of the mountain there so we are just gonna just kind of ambulate and am, just i don't know ambulate along i guess you can say and we're just gonna take our time for the initial part of the mission because we're going to be stuck waiting for this guy anyways so there's no real rush to do this and even if you just sit here for half an hour, you're more than welcome to do this as this train rolled on through. Um, there is a chance we might get some red lights along the way. And if we do, we do. If we don't, we don't. So we'll work with it. I might have to increase the throttle here just to make sure we can link up to this train. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up a Google Sheets that I ended up finding out online. And I'm going to show you essentially what needs to be done on this train and which part of the Google Sheets we'll be working on in terms of setting up this train. And we want to make sure the train is properly set up. There we go. We are locked in. Wait, a, wait for a moment, it says. So let's go ahead and close our window because we're not really going to be in this engine anymore. Um, right here, we just put the reverse to the neutral. It actually says turn the light off. So we're going to turn these, these two lights here off. And... What happened here? Oh, it went back to dim. Okay, there we go. We turn the light off. We're going to turn off our gauge light because we don't need this. And for now, we're going to turn turn this to um, trail 626. And we're going to turn this to cut out. And we're going to turn this handle all the way to the off position. Should be the next one. 
There it is. Handle off. I always mix it up with where the emergency brake is, so hopefully it doesn't go anything up here. So, there we go. That auto brake says go to full service. I don't know why they want the auto brake on full service. It's really bizarre that they want this on full service, but that makes no sense. So, here's the thing. We're, gonna, we're just going to leave this engine here. And we're going to walk, actually, we're going to go back to the previous engine that we were just in. And we're going to start back here first. So on the screen, if I did this right, you should have a Google Sheet that popped up on the screen here. What we're going to be working on is we're going to be working on the trail engine number four. That's what we're going to work on first. So what we need to make sure first off is we're going to have this controlled from another unit coupled at either end. We're going to leave that alone. We're going to leave the number of lights alone. We're going to hop in the engineer seat. And according to what it says, the handle needs to be turned off. So we have our automatic handle to handle off. We need to put the independent brake to release. We got our independent brake to release. We need to put the cutout valve to cut out. So we're going to make sure that's set to cut out here. We are going to have the MU2A valve set to trail 626. Next, we're going to put in the reverser. The reverser, there is no reverser here, so that's good. We're going to check our three dials. These three dials are turned off, so this is the proper way for setting up this Trail 4 engine here. Next up, we're going to check our banking comm radio. The banking comm is this thing. It is currently turned off. That's going to be hugely important here. We want to make sure the distributed power fuse and the radio fuse is turned off. So in this engine, the radio fuse is right here. I don't exactly know what the hot D stands for there, but we want to make sure that turned off in particular. This is the headlight, the lights. We have auto drain timer, auxiliary cab. We have heaters. We have utilities, we have electronic devices, warning devices, brake transmission control, AC control, reverser control, module control, um, generator fields, etc, etc. And there's all these little things here. So for now, we're going to leave everything the way it is. Um, and we know the fuse is working because we checked it earlier. So that covers the fuse in this first rail car. So that's trail four, which is the one we're currently in here. Everything is properly set up for trail four. We are going to now go back to Trail 3, which is the engine that we just drove in here. So this is Trail 3, this engine right here. Oh, I for no, I didn't. I turned off the light there. I'm good there. Okay, so we're going to hop back into Trail 3. We'll leave this door open for a little bit here. In Trail 3, we're going to set the headlight control to controlled from another unit coupled at either end. And we're going to leave the headlight on the way it is. And we're going to hop into the engineer seat here. While we're here, we'll turn off the cabin lights because we won't need the cabin light. We will remove the reverser handle. We're going to make sure the lights are off on both the front and rear. We're going to make sure the bell is turned off. Independent brake is set to release. The automatic brake actually needs to be on handle off. That's what's important in this rail car. Cutout valve is set to cut out. MU2A valve is set to trail 626. So in the manual, if you ever read the manual, the manual will tell you that this engine needs to be on leader dead. That is completely not true. This engine needs to be on trail 626. Here's the reason why. That lead engine is about a mile down in the other direction. So we need to make sure that these, these three and four and two all need to be set up a trailing engine, not leading engines. Next, we need to also make sure that these switches are off. And again, the point of turning off these three switches right here is this will give us the power to the lead engine. And we want to make sure the lead engine gets power for all three engines on top of the lead engine power itself. And so this should be good. The bell is off here. We want to double check that just to make sure. And on the fuse in this engine, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to turn the radio fuse off. So that will cover that and we also need to make sure the banking comm is off. This engine's officially set up as a trailing engine. So we finished over there. We have number four and over here we have number three. So hopefully on the chart you were looking at, we're following the right chart here. I noticed there was another train driving by. I don't know where he came from, but he looks like a long train. Let's see how far along our other engine is. It's still quite a ways up there. At some point this guy's going to come to a single and get stuck at the single. Who knows where that there is the single right there. So we'll see if he gets stuck here or if he keeps going. But yeah, like I said, the longer I take, the the better I'm going to be on this mission. So now we're going to walk 0.8 miles away to the other engine. And we might as well just kind of explore things. This is a bad track to sit on. So I'm going to hop over. Probably in the next car. Let's just hop over in the next car over here. 
And finally, the engines, we finally made it. Yay. I don't know why it's telling me to go 0.6 miles further to my engine, but this is actually where I'm supposed to go. So that was very strange. Anyways, let's hop onto this engine. We're going to make sure this engine is already released. We're going to, it looks like we're driving SD40s here. And we're going to go ahead and I'll check the engine on the way out. What I do want to make sure here is I got number lights on this engine. Going to set this to controlled from another unit coupled at either end. Just like how we set up the two previous ones. We're going to hop into the engineer seat here. We're going to make sure all three of these dials are turned off like they are. We're going to make sure the bell is off, lights are off in here. This engine looks like it's good. Independent brake set to release. Automatic brake handle is set to handle off. Cutout valve set to cutout. MU 2A valve is set trail 626. Banking comm is set to off. So this engine is properly set. We just have to make sure to shut off the radio. Make sure the radio is turned off like it was there. Check our light. Our light is working. Everything is good on the view side. Let's go ahead and walk out the front door and check and make sure the engine actually works on this engine. Because sometimes we may find it may not actually be active. So this engine does not have fuel pressure and it does not have any power. So I kind of wonder if this engine really is on. So let's go ahead and turn these three switches back on for temporary. And just kind of see if we get anything out of this when we check that um, panel again. This engine may actually be off here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually just make sure the engine is running. I'm gonna turn off my um, microphone. It sounds like the engine's on, but I can't actually tell if it's running. So I'm gonna make sure that this engine is properly turned on. So let's go ahead and just, you know what, the best way to do this is to hop into the seat here Temporarily set the independent brake to full application, set this to freight, set this tier to leader dead, and that will give us a little bit of power to the brake, pi brake pipes right there. Let's go ahead and set the reverser on, and we'll put the, actually that didn't do anything. We'll set the reverser to forward here for a second, we'll see if we can get any throttle here. So it looks like we're getting power, so it looks like this engine is running indeed. So let's just go ahead and turn this back off, release the handle, release the the handle all together that one was fine release this bail it off leader dead now back to trail 626 and this is back to cutout we wanted to make sure that this engine is indeed running like it's supposed to so let's just make sure that that's shut we're going to shut the door here we're going to shut the panel uh i can't do it with that one first this one's got to go first this one's got to go second lock the door and one last thing i just realized i left these three on so let's go ahead and turn these back off and this engine should now officially be set up as trail two and if i've been doing this right you should be seeing this on the screen little by little as we go along now we're going to be heading into trail one and this is our main engine to be sitting in and now it's supposedly 16 yard yay so this one's probably going to be the same problem where the i can't check the governor or anything so let's make sure and worst case, I can always start up the engine. So this one's also doing it. Worst case, I can actually start the engine. But it sounds like it's turned on from what I can understand. There's no other engines around me. Or is there? Oh yeah, there's one set of engines down there. So that's the one that could be on. We'll have to wait and see what happens here. So let's hop in the door. Shut the door behind it. That one already closed. So we're good. Oh, hello. <laughs> Wasn't expecting this guy. But hopefully you can just kind of hang out with me for the trip. This is now going to be controlled from another... Controlling from with unit coupled at either end. This is going to be... Uh, sorry. Controlled from a unit coupled at long hood end. So that's going to be our headlight control. This should control all three... All four of our engines to be in the proper um, position for headlights. In this train, we're going to set the cabin lights on. So we both have cabin lights. Somehow we went back in time a year. It is now November 17th. We're operating this westbound stack train today. No doubt it's packed with all the latest gadgets and gizmos. That extra traction you attached? Well, we've been asked to take it up to the summit for work in the area. There's a shortage of engineers today, or someone would have run them up independently. Okay, hopefully he doesn't tell you anything else. So I put on the heat for us, because it is November, it gets kind of cold. Um, I just turned on the lights, but now it's telling me to put the reverter handle in. We're going to set this to forward. We're going to make sure that all three of these switches are turned on. That's going to be key. Um, I just set this to bright. This one here I'm going to set to dim. Just to have a little bit of light in the back there. 
We're going to set our ditch light to on, and we're going to set our dynamic break. We're going to leave that alone for now. We're going to set our gauge light to on. Check our warning light to make sure they all work. Um, this is for turning on sand, and you can kind of see that works. This is also for turning on the sand, too. We won't need that for a little bit. We're going to set this to freight. We're going to set the MU2A valve to lead or dead. We're going to set the automatic brake handle to release. That should start filling things up. This is Q015, requesting a track warrant from Cumberland Terminal to Sand Patch. Over. Q015, subject to signal indication. Proceed from Cumberland Terminal to Sand Patch. Over. Q015, subject to signal indications. Proceeding from Cumberland Terminal to Sand Patch. Out. So before we even get moving, there's already mistakes being done here by the game. So first off, the brake pipe needs to fill up to 89. So it's going to take a very long time to get this brake pipe filled up all the way. And so we're not going to worry about this for right now. We're just going to let it do its thing. The second thing I noticed in this game, I'm going to save this right now. Um, and I'm going to save it again once I'm done here. But the second thing with this game is when you hang out too much on the outside of this train, you end up with the issue and... That's one thing. It takes forever to load both sides of the engine. But if you spend too much time on the outside, it will actually freeze up and you can't get back inside your train. So that's one of the problems. The second problem here is we need to make our, make sure our fuses are properly set up in this train, which would not. So this fuse is on and it is working. We need to make sure the radio fuse is turned on in this train, which would not in the other one. Um, for whatever reason, it's this gets kind of important here. We need to make sure this radio is on, and I've already made one mistake. Uh, the radio need to be, the fuse need to be turned on for the radio in the lead engine for Trail 3. So I am actually going to go back to Trail 3 and make sure I can do that. So let's see if I can hop back there. I don't know which button was it. I think it was Control. No, not Control Zero. I think that did it. There it goes. This is the right engine, I think. Let's double check and see where where I am here. Am I in here? Uh, no, I don't know. Let's see. I'm, I'm going to move the camera here. Make sure I'm in this engine. Because if I'm in this engine, I'm in the right train. No, I'm not. Okay. Well, we're going to do this from the window then if we can get away with this. So we need to make sure that the radio fuse here in this engine is turned on. So there's our radio. So this engine here, this DPU engine, needs to make sure to be in the correct position for DPU. And so I had to do this through the window because I'm not going to go walk in a mile and a half all the way back just to turn on that one dial there. So let's get ourselves back in our main engine. And that's not our main engine. This one is here. And second thing I'm going to do is make sure I've got the radio on in this engine. And what's most important here that didn't get announced in the train, and as you see in that um, wonderful... Um, Google Sheet that now pulled up is the fact that we have to turn on the banking com. And again, the banking com is this one here. So what the banking com will do is whatever single I send here, it will send the same single back to trail three in order for trail three to operate just like this engine. And we want to make sure that the trail three and the lead engine trail one or the one that I'm currently in are operating in sync with each other. So before I go, let's go find out what happened to that train and how far up he is now. He's finally far enough, so that's good news. He's gotten through a couple singles. He's all the way up here now. So he's going to get stuck at yet another single shortly. So let's see how much more that's he's got to go to at least here. So he's now going to be right about here. So he's not even halfway up the mountain yet. So like I said, anything I could do to just delay this, the better off it is for me in the long run. And so we're going to go ahead and release our independent brake. We now have our brake pipe completely full. We're going to blow our horn twice and we're going to go ahead and set our throttle up one. And this is just going to take forever for this train to move. And so we're going to let this train kind of slowly go forward little by little. There it goes. Now, if you did this right, you should be able to move your train with throttle one. As you can see, we're moving with throttle one power here. It's very slight. It's very slow. But this train is moving little by little here. So we're going to set this up to throttle two. This train should start moving a little bit more now that we have extra power here. And what we'd have to make sure here is we have all of the switches set initially to the right switch. So we got to switch this one switch. Make sure these switches are good to go. 
Make sure that switch is good to go. And at some point, this train will switch tracks. And we want to make sure that we should be good to go to switch tracks way up here. And by the way, at some point, a little ways into the journey, the train will naturally start to switch on its own. And this should be the part where the train's going to start to merge shortly after this third track here. Right about there, that's where it's going to merge. And we're going to make sure that this thing does what it's supposed to do. And we're going to end up on that track right there. And so in the meantime, a couple things we got to look out for is our whistle point. We're not too worried about that right now. Um, we just want to get this train moving little by little. And, and again, the idea here is just taking our time. Let that other train move as far as, as far as possible. There is a point where we have to stop at location um, Sand Patch Summit. And if you just look at this, that's the only part that we got to do right there it just get to the summit and then we're going to be shutting the engine off when we get there to, and then shutting it off and going to the pickup to stop the train so basically our main goal is to go 17 miles to the top of the mountain and this will give us 500 points there and so all of our points here so this is 500 points this is 250 and then these little things are just probably 250 probably combined together and so all of our points are really going to come from the fact that we're driving underneath the speed limit so that's going to be critical that's going to be key and if we just go on the outside of this engine, maybe not here, but this is actually kind of a cool, cool location to be right there, right next to the window there. I just will open up my own window because it's, it's a nice day out there. And this train's about a mile long, and so it's just going to take a very, very long time to get this train moving. So let's go ahead and snap this picture. It's not a bad picture right there. See what I can get out of it. And I'm going to leave the bell on up to a certain point on this mission. And there's going to be a point here where the bell is going to turn off. But I have to get past the number of the, of the essentially the grades and, and crossings and whatnot up ahead. So we're going to go to camera 8. And actually, let's see how I'm doing speed-wise. 6.6. Um, okay, good. So we're going to go to camera 8. And we're going to kind of see what's coming up ahead. At some point, we're going to, we are gonna—we don't have to worry about this single here. So again, this single will tell you three singles in advance. The lower one will be your single. The next one up will be the single after you. And the last one will be the farthest single that's um, the main single. So the main thing we got to watch out for is going to be roadways. And our first roadway is going to be crossing us almost right here. But it's actually way down once we kind of start getting connected up with the main train down this way and I don't believe the whistle stop will let us know this in advance it's actually going to be on this side where we're going to see the whistle stop so what we have to make sure is once we cross the bridge we got to remember there's probably going to be a train crossing coming up ahead and let's see how far down we are to that crane crossing there's the speed limit change there ah there's the whistle stop right there so that's the whistle stop we're looking for it's the one where we cross over this bridge here and then we finally get to um, Cumberland Station. And at Cumberland Station, we want to blow the horn as well as this grade crossing right here. And then that's going to start us off with a bunch of whistle stops that we really have to pay attention to. Because all of the whistle stops are all going to be all going to be essentially out on the opposite side. So we're going to see most of the whistle stops right over here so for example there's a whistle stop right ahead and so i won't be able to see this from this track here and it looks like i've got a single that's going to stop me first right here so i got to keep this single mine 1.8 miles away from me oh my gosh that was a long long trip oh my gosh my track disappeared that was so much fun so i got a single at least 1.8 miles away being in a big train like this it's probably going to take me a mile to stop this train at high speed and so we just got to keep this in mind about how much distance we are to stop this train. And that's going to be critical for making sure the train stops on time and on in progress. And I think I could just drop this down to um, throttle one here. I don't know if it's still going to give me any boost here. Let's see what happens if I do this. Go up to throttle seven because um, we're starting to have a little challenge with the grade. We can only go up to throttle eight. And so that's the maximum speed we can get out of this. So we're giving it throttle seven now, just to make sure we can get up the grade here. And this is probably both gonna turn red, so let's find out what it does once we get through. Yep, they're both red. Okay, we got another yellow light up ahead. It's gonna be a little tricky here. I'm a little concerned. 